Foster is brought to you by FQM Trident Limited, a subsidiary of First Quantum Minerals Limited. Zambia is a rich country which governors blame corruption for the status of it being very poor. The new administration has ever embarked on a crusade of the anti-corruption fight, which is the darling of the, its international friends. But the fruits of the anti-corruption one year on are not forthcoming. While the arrests are published, the convictions are nowhere to be seen. Tonight we discuss the fight against corruption. But before we do that, we take a break. In me for Sunday's edition of Costa. My name is Andrew Mwansa, sitting in uh, for Costa Mwansa. Tonight, we host Transparency International Zambia chapter president, Mr. Sampa Kalungu. We discuss the fight against corruption. The big question we're trying to find out tonight is are we winning? You too could be part of the conversation by calling us on the number that is reflecting on your screen, or perhaps you can give us a text uh, by commenting on our social media live stream. Our Facebook page is Diamond TV Zambia. Mr. Sampa Kalungu, thank you so much for joining me tonight on Costa, and uh, we hope to have a good conversation with you. Thank you, Romansa, for having me. It's a pleasure to again make an appearance um, on your important uh, television discussing important matters in the nation. Like I said earlier on, we're discussing the fight against corruption. I think my first, first question to you, uh, Mr. Kalungu, is how you generally uh, feel over the fight against corruption currently. It's a big question. For one, to answer that, you need to understand where you're coming from. Uh, August last year is not far away, and before that we were given the platform uh, upon which we made as a basis for us to evaluate anything that would be coming um, after that in terms of corruption. We realized that the UPND government set highest standards in terms of how they are going to deal with issues of corruption, how they are going to um, fairly um, deal with every Zambian, how they were not going to make anybody um, a sacrificial lamb, how they were not going to protect anybody, um, how they will make sure that they will support the institutions that fight corruption. They gave us also a um, mandate how they will listen to the people, how they will follow up cases, how they will not be vindictive, and so on. So from that, that's a basis upon which one can then say and evaluate your question, how are we looking at uh, corruption at the moment? Are we winning? Are we um, losing the fight? Um, definitely, you may see that there have been a lot of movements that have been happening. Uh, we have seen a lot of arrests that have been made. Um, we have seen a lot of seizures that have been um, uh, done. Um, but of course, yeah, we are yet to start seeing convictions of, of this. But at the same time, we have heard, we have seen where people are crying that uh, this uh, fight is lopsided, uh, where we are fighting corruption and, uh, for those against those that um, uh, held uh, offices, public offices in the previous government, and there is no problem with that. And we are not doing much with the current uh, corruption that is happening um, within government, um, especially in some of the key ministries, um, such as Minister of Health, um, there are also allegations in other ministries as well, that we are not doing much to that. So in that sense, one would say, um, yes, the momentum to fight corruption is there. Um, there have been a lot of property that have been seized uh, in line of fighting corruption, but uh, one might definitely mm. you, not you, see... You, you speak of the fact that the new Dawn administration has set a very high standard yeah. on the fight against corruption, and one of their commitments is them not being vindictive uh, in this you know, uh, process of fighting corruption. Do you think they have followed those standards that they had committed themselves to of not being vindictive? Because what we're seeing now, uh, the complaints from the previous regime, those that served in the previous regime are stating that this is clearly a witch hunt. Yeah. So people need to, uh, to, uh, to, to look at this question very clearly and very carefully um, in the sense that corruption mainly focuses on the public officers the institutions that are established under the government. And um, the corruption we look at at the moment is the people who held the office before. And the people who held the office before, they are the ones who are in charge of managing the resources of the nation. And if you have to talk about corruption, if you are even to look at the scale, you are likely to say cases um, of the previous government are likely to be more of the cases of the 
current government because of so also the time that they've been there. So we are likely to see that more of the cases will come from the previous government um, than less of this. But as the years go by, we'll find that also we will be seeing a lot of this. But um, having said that, one would see that, for instance, would one tell that from the time that uh, the UPND came into government, there have been no cases of corruption that we, the Anti-Corruption Commission, for instance, and the Drug Enforcement Commission and other law enforcement agencies, including the Zambia police, would have not seen and followed up. And we have seen publicly the way they call these people to their offices and show that. So we are seeing that there is less of this. And it's hardly to remember a case um, where a current um, uh, uh, officer of the, um, of the government, as it was called, maybe apart from the one which happened with the Minister of Health, um, we are not seeing that. For instance, there is a case that people have been crying about in terms of fertilizer, but have we seen the Anti-Corruption Commission publicly coming to um, say we are investigating this to see how it has been? We are already hearing about the case of um, um, the Minister of Health where it's alleged that she was also involved with the TFM uh, issues. Are we seeing also being, her being questioned the interest of the, for instance, the Anti-Corruption Commission or DEC taking interest in trying to um, um, ascertain whether there, there is a case or not where they need to invite but, but, us? Uh, but as, as Transparency International Zambia, are you keen in, 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 in following up on these very important cases that pertain to corruption that is involved within the state? We are very keen. And uh, uh, for us, um, the, 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 what we, we understand and our, our stance is that um, when there is corruption, it doesn't matter whether it, it, uh, it touches. As long as anyone uh, puts her feet, uh, her hands, or his feet, or his hands into dirt waters, they need to be investigated. And we are happy even at some point the president of this nation, President Harinde Ichilema, had said he was going not to, to defend anybody. So we wouldn't want to see a situation where um, somebody, the people are crying about it, people are taking cases um, about it, and then there is nothing that is happening. We would want But, but are movement. you happy with the pace at which the president, or perhaps the law enforcement agencies, you know, are moving? You speak of the fertilizer scandal. Uh, you speak of another scandal that allegedly involves the minister of responsible for health, you know, Sylvia Masewa. But there seems to be slow pace in ensuring that these are brought to public attention by the law enforcement agencies. Are you worried, as Transparency International Zambia, of the pace at which the law enforcement agencies are moving in when it comes to publishing uh, yeah. corruption in the current Definitely, government? Definitely we are worried. One thing that we, want, we would want to preserve at, all point, at, at every time is that the law enforcement agencies, such as the anti-corruption, including the drug enforcement, their status, their caliber, their integrity is well maintained so that people would feel comfortable to go to them and make a complaint knowing that it will be followed up. But where there are questions where that there's certain cases that are being placed before the law enforcement agencies and they're not taking um, um, any action, then that becomes um, a, a worrisome. You remember um, a few months ago before the appointment of the Director General and also the chair for anti-corruption commission the level uh, of perception of the anti-corruption commission was such very low and we don't want to move to that level where people are no longer having interest in the uh, law enforcement agencies because these are the institutions we need to fight corruption so we would want to do that but having said that the law enforcement agencies they have also a task to do to manage the perception of the people how are people seeing us fight are we calling only these opposition people, then we publish that and we, we make a statement. But also, are we hearing allegations or we are receiving allegations about uh, people who are sitting in government, but we are being secretive about it? It could be that they are actually doing something about it, but the way they are communicating to the people, that's an important part. Because the way you communicate, that's the way you form perception. And perception leads to decision making and also to action and inaction. Because the way people would perceive something, they might even be violent, they might be thinking um, government is favoring certain people. So yes, we want law enforcement agencies to be fair, uh, to deal with anyone who is um, uh, accused, uh, who is alleged to have done something, so that we can know whether there is some substantive things or not. But at the same time, they need also to be consistent in the way they manage information, the way they communicate to the A lot people. of seizures have been done, a lot of arrests, over 30% of former cabinet ministers are currently being you know, investigated by these law enforcement agencies. And cases are, are currently active in, in, in court. We have however not seen any convictions of any uh, one who is politically who is politically exposed at the moment are you worried with the rate or the pace at which this anti-corruption commission are moving but also what the patriotic front think is that 
this law enforcement agencies are there to dent the image of the patriotic front because no conviction has been done yet arrests and seizures have been done on these individuals so there are two ways we can look at it first of all um us having also privilege of speaking to the anti-corruption commission you might understand that the anti-corruption commission from even five years back in terms of personnel they don't have the, the uh, required establishment. In terms of resources, um, in terms of machinery that they need, in terms of the um, training that they need to update themselves, they are all falling short of, of all these things in almost uh, no departments. You need to understand that. Because if you look at the bulk of cases they have at the moment, and you look at the officers who are involved. And remember, investigation, even when we're talking about anti-corruption commission, it's not everyone in the anti-corruption commission who is involved in, in, in investigation. There is wing for uh, public, public um, uh, 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 education. There are those also in admin. But we do not have enough resources. We do not have even enough equipment. At some point, the anti-corruption commission had only three motor vehicles to run throughout the country to try to do the investigations and so on. So one part you would understand, yes, um, um, the, the, the Anti-Corruption Commission, definitely they need massive um, resource um, uh, uh, enrichment uh, to themselves in terms of human resource and financial and material resources and other equipment, including uh, training. They need that a lot. Um, uh, secondly, cases take a long time. Um, because even when the Anti-Corruption Commission has completed their own cases, they are not in charge of how fast the cases go because then that falls in the hands of the, the courts. The courts can tell you today, you come today, um, and then the next, um, appoint, the, the next uh, date they are giving you is in December or they give you in February. You have nothing to do but to do that. That's why on that point we appreciate the fact that the government has said they are going to establish not only a financial and economic uh, uh, fast track court but also the anti-corruption um, uh, uh, anti fast track courts because then those will be specifically looking at issues of corruption. So we think then the cases can be moving quite fast. So in terms of um, conviction, we are too early actually even to think about a conviction because they take a lot of time but so there are also appeals and so on so maybe um, to be fair on the um, uh, the anti-corruption commission uh, conviction for the cases that they started and some of them maybe have not even you have just said about being interviewed but they have do, not do, been do you think the anti-corruption commission perhaps should withhold some of the um, information that they have especially on politicians uh, because what is there now, Mr. Kalungu, is that when we say Mr. Kalungu is being investigated, mm -hmm. the public has already tempted you. you and judged you that <laughs> Mr. Kalungu is, is, is guilty. Yeah. And, and sometimes we've seen that even as cases go, the Anti-Corruption Commission, because they don't have enough evidence, they get to, to, to dispose them off. Do you think perhaps they should withhold uh, publishing information, uh, you know, and perhaps secretly begin to investigate uh, before uh, they have enough evidence to ensure that they could secure a conviction. There is some substance in what you are asking there, perhaps in order to uh, manage the expectation of the people. Because when you call people, they're just like calling you. Some of them just calling you for the statement. It's just a simple statement. Others could be when you have advanced, you have got maybe some prima facie uh, evidence, then you start getting into issues of one and caution. Yeah? Uh, maybe at the level when you have done a little bit more of discovery, a little bit more of investigation. Because of, of, of that yeah? case where the, the Anti-Corruption Commission said they're investigating a former councillor who bought a bank and exactly exactly it's when you have substantiated the, the information it's not only the anti-corruption we know like deck at some point they published they, they 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 come and they say we have seized this property only to find that it was somebody else it was not even the person they were to you remember at some point it was like the former first lady's property and then they realized it was not belonging to that person yeah we are right, that's why we're saying maybe there is a stage that they need to do their own underground work without a lot of publicity. And then when they've got facts and they are ready now to start uh, maybe at the stage of one and caution and start thinking about pushing the cases to the DPP's office and to the courts, then that's a point maybe they need to announce to the people. Because then the people will be, that would be even the time that people will be looking at, you will announce that you are doing some investigations here and let's see how you go. But also you need to remember that even when we are pushing for people to be um, prosecuted, those who are involved in, their, in, in the corruption um, scandals. But at the same time, they are human beings who have got 
their own rights. We are aware of that even when we are advocating for this. So the people also need to be respected in that. So that, like you said, we do not just tench the people's names just because we want sometimes to, um, um, uh, to be used uh, in terms of political um, getting uh, back at uh, uh, our political opponents. Mm. So it's something that we can... Uh, are you can happy with the team that the President has assembled at the Anti-Corruption Commission and, and the DC? DC, we see the Director General there, Mary Chira, and now uh, Gilbert Peary is going to be moved from SEC, you know, going to the DPP, but also Chairperson, you know, Musa Mwenye. Are, are you happy with the team and confident in the team that the President has assembled to fight Let me corruption? begin with the Anti-Corruption Commission. We very... We immediately when they appointed, first of all, we had been uh, um, um, advocating, we had been asking the president to make an appointment, uh, to make the appointments as quickly as possible. If you remember, the Anti-Corruption Commission remained for a long time without a substantive director general and without a commission. And we knew that if an important institution like uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission without a substantive institution, and the, the institution which seems to be highly uh, influenced by the executive, you don't want somebody who is acting. Somebody who is acting, you can push them here and there. But when that appointment was made, we were very happy and we congratulated the president for having made that and the commission. So it was, and the people that were appointed, um, Mr. Gilbert Piri and also uh, Musa Mwenye State Council, they are very competent people that we know and trust. And we've seen even after the appointment, things have, ch have changed. But Having you mentioned that now Mr. Gilbert Piri has been now uh, um, appointed as the uh, DPP pending the ratification uh, from Parliament, <clears throat> we are worried again because the person who will come here, in again will start like from another level and, and it's, the, the pace might be disturbed a little bit, but we are hoping not. Coming to the Director of Public Prosecution, <clears throat> Again, um, when they made an appointment for uh, Madam Mary Chirwa, I think uh, we also were very happy. The, the only DC. problem we, yeah, uh, DEC, well, uh, because you remember there was a point where there were issues to do with her and that disturbed the flow of things. Mm. And we wished that uh, those um, disruption, disturbances uh, around the Director General for uh, DEC would not come because actually definitely they have had uh, some negative impact on the institution. But in the same way, we are also appealing that uh, the financial intelligence center also be given the, the, a substantive director general so that all these institutions, if they are fully fledged and they can work at their full capacity. Mm. How do we make sure we, we, we maintain independence you know, with these law enforcement agencies? Because year in, year out, we hear of the fact that the executive is interfering with the works of the law enforcement agencies. Even during President Edgar Lungo's tenure, actually for him it was the opposite. He was saying that the, these law enforcement agencies are against him, but in this regime we are hearing people stating that the law enforcement agencies are being used by the executive. How do we make sure that there is independence in the execution of the duties of these law enforcement agencies? The way governance systems are in, in, in Africa especially, we, ne we need to, to face the truth that they are highly influenced indirectly and directly by the executive. And the best remedy of this is actually the executive itself to give the power to these institutions to work, to bring about political will, to really give them enough um, space to operate as they see things. Um, because some of the statements that you hear from the politicians um, can tell you that they are trying to control the, 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 the law enforcement agencies. Um, where they, um, for instance, if it's, let's say, the head of state <coughs> makes a statement which is insinuating that if people don't act, if people are seeing other people not doing something, they are not m making any action around it, you can't do it. I have repeated one example, which I have not seen again, and I'm happy about that, where the president at some point said, um, I already talked to the minister who was alleged to have been involved in the, some kind of corruption, and there is no case. You know, if the president says that and he's your, your boss, mm. you don't want to go investigate again the person who has appointed you and he's saying there is no case. There's, a, there's, a, there's another case mm. that President uh, Hitchin mentioned when he was a state house, uh, when, when, when he mentioned that he was shocked that uh, the law enforcement agencies have entered you know, deals with other politicians and, 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 and he was of the considered view that the law enforcement agencies should revisit some of these cases that they had left. And shortly we did see a uh, uh, Pombashi member of parliament, you know, Honorable Chitotela, getting to be called back again by these law enforcement agencies to review, you know, some of the deals that uh, he had entered with the state. Are you worried that the head of state is touching on issues that involve corruption and perhaps, well, pe pe perhaps maybe this then paints a, a narrative that 
is using these law enforcement agencies. So there are two things. Um, the president is also a citizen like me who would also bring about issues of corruption and point to that. But we might need to be aware, and the president needs to be aware that the perception also matters. He has many uh, spaces where he can speak to the director general um, and, or the commission itself about that. But maybe making statements publicly about certain people, it would be like him directing the law enforcement agencies to take action. A thing which we don't want to see. Remember I said about perception. If when he said that, people then, and then the next time, even when perhaps the anti-corruption commission might have been investigating that, but they see then moving in the person that the, person, the president mentioned, then people are saying actually he's directing um, the, uh, the anti-corruption. But what we would want to see, the president can use his other means to communicate to these law enforcement agencies, but to let them work um, uh, independently around this. But also even to give um, uh, them an opportunity, uh, even an assurance that when you hear somebody within my government, I won't hinder you. Go investigate, and if there's anything, then let the people admit that. And I keep always mentioning that, and indeed there is no need for the head of state to protect any mature human being who is a minister, who is a public did servant. You, with, you, with, with his posture currently, do you, do you mm. get the sense that he's protected some of his ministers? Yeah, of course, in the past we have had something like that, but we are no longer seeing that. It is pulled back, which is a good thing. But also you might also see um, when certain things are happening, in within government. For instance, there are certain statements that members of parliament, ministers, and sometimes even the president and the vice president would make, which also would um, uh, uh, make the law enforcement think twice. When you say my, cons my, my, my government has no corruption, but then there are other cases. Um, but also where you find there is some cases that are being mentioned, that, but also you're not doing well. But also within that uh, aspect, you can also tell the way uh, an institution behaves um, and the level of corruption. I'll mention one very important thing. It was justified in, uh, in Parliament, the issue to do again with the fertilizer now, the distribution. You remember very well when the Minister of um, Agriculture uh, was um, about to start distributing uh, agricultural imports. They had called the seed companies, they had called the fertilizer companies to go and bid. And they spent the whole day at the Minister of Agriculture. And um, then, um, at the last minute, they cancelled all those people that uh, they had gone in terms of bidding in the process of, uh, of procuring um, services of um, companies that were going to distribute uh, um, um, fertilizer. And then the minister said they were going to appoint their own people because there was an error, a technical error that they were going to, to say. And the minister went ahead and they, the government picked their own, their own people <coughs> um, that they, they trusted to start distributing, those are the people. But you know how much was involved? It's about 300 million um, um, that was involved in this uh, distribution of this. For us, it's not wrong. Actually, there's a provision that in cases of emergencies, the government, um, uh, the institution can actually um, uh, select individual or like hand pick or single source or group source, they can do that. But even the way you use that and the amount of money that are involved, but also the space that you have. For us, we expected that if the ministry, the Minister of Agriculture having identified that there was a problem with the procurement of um, services of contractors, and it involved so much money, and somebody had made a mistake to the level that it was going to delay the distribution, which involved so much money, we would have seen some heads roll. We would have seen some disciplinary action being taken by whoever made that big mistake. But we thought we had still enough time for them to have gone back and started the, the process um, again. But having had picked those, we hope in the future it won't arise as something that we see as being corrupt. Because the concerns would be, was it just a decoy that they did? They had, they had in mind the people they wanted to give contract to. So they made sure that um, the, the, the process was flawed. So these all questions are being asked. So that does not give you that Minister of Agriculture purely is away from uh, the levels of corruption. It starts giving, we're not saying they are, they are corrupt, but it starts making you ask questions. Was that process necessary? 300 million US dollars involved, and then you just hand pick, you can't go through the ZPPA process of procuring. I think maybe the decision might not have been the best of decision in terms of showing that the current government is committed to fighting corruption and even the process. Of, we need to remember that. 
a lot of corruption, as it's even been shown and demonstrated in the Auditor General's report, that a lot of corruption come through these issues to do with procurement, issues to do with contracting. And I think from our perspective, the Minister of Agriculture should have done better in terms of how it awarded people to distribute the, um, the inputs to the, to the rest of the, uh, the country. We know they were fighting, uh, they, were, uh, they were trying to run against uh, um, the season um, before the rains begin, but still the amounts of money involved uh, were too huge. Mm. And, well, the, yeah. uh, till now, you know, farming inputs have not, been, have not reached other districts. They haven't. They, they haven't reached other districts, and so... Uh, that justification really then purely becomes academic. But I want to find out, you know, something from you, Mr. Kalungu, in line with the fertilizer scandals. We, we whistleblowers have been speaking about the fertilizer scandals just even from the beginning of uh, of, of this particular year. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've been, they've been speaking about you know the, the fertilizer scandals. Have you taken keen interest in? finding out really uh, what could have transpired you know for government to have taken that particular decision but also we, we have seen you know people you know taking this particular case to you know to to, to, to the to, to the law enforcement agents have, have you have you put so much interest especially about this particular scandal the fertilizer scandal uh, if it's the the recent one is not a scandal as such but the earlier one was alleged to be a scandal but even this one um, the one where the, there have been the distribution of inputs, the latest one I'm talking about, the, a lot of questions were, were raised. But even when you listen to um, the uh, parliamentary debate, a lot of questions were asked about the process, which meant people are seeing it as being problematic and it has a potential of uh, um, having corruption in that. It had potential of denting the name of the ministry, but also denting the name of the government because of the process they chose instead of the one which is much more transparent, the one which you can go to and check. But this one is just the uh, uh, actually single sourcing, uh, actually access the, the people that they wanted. So they threw away all the people who were uh, bidding for, for, uh, for, the, for the contracts because they said there was an, a technical error in that process, which we are not disputing. It could be there, it could be not. But whatever you do, it also uh, leaves much on, on a lot of questions. You might decide, I can do this with a lot of questions on it, or I can do this without a lot of questions. But there was another earlier um, mm -hmm. with the case but, but, on, but on do you fertilizer. think there's been so much transparency? No, 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 no. You know. When you are single sourcing, there's little transparency about it because you are picking people. You can even say maybe the justification they were making, these people are the people that will, they have done work before. Um, but also we have heard the president talk about that. If we continue providing on your contracts to the people who have done before, what about the new entrants into the business? The president said, we bring them in. These are the things that the president actually has been encouraging. How do we only be picking old people? Then old people have been working with, with, the, with the experience. How do the other new entrants come through? So the single sourcing itself in the terms of public um, uh, procurement is not the best thing to do unless we are pressed with emergencies. For instance, the way we had COVID and we didn't have enough time to start going through the process, then you can justify things. If today, let's say, Correra broke, in um, broke out in Lusaka and we needed to contain it and we needed to find that vaccines or whatever chemicals need to be brought, maybe people can understand. But certain things like mm. fertilizer, how, we have seasons. How would you rate the New Dawn's you know, first year in terms of their transparency, especially in terms of procurement, like you, like you put it, you know, and other deals that this government has cracked? How do you weigh and rate their transparency. It's, it's hard really to, uh, to rate them because not everything that um, uh, is being done um, is, um, um, has been given. But there are cases where we have spoken and we have shown um, displeasure about certain things. For instance, you remember uh, the community development issue uh, to do with the bikes, where the bikes were put at a kind of price uh, which was um, um, absolutely um, astronomical. And we had expressed our views there that this really cannot be. The justification that came through that even from the Minister of Information was that that was the lowest, um, the lo the lowest um, uh, bid that they had. But I still remember what the president said. We, we cannot agree to the fact that um, the PF government had contracted some road contractors because they had quoted uh, um, the lowest bid in terms of how much one kilometer was going to cost. He said, no, we cannot depend on that. Um, because if I say, for instance, the camera is costing um, one million, and the other one says uh, they, it's costing 1.2 million. Yet we know the camera can cost about 250,000. Are we going to go for 1 million just because it is the lowest? 
No, but what about the value for money? We have a lot of technology. We have a lot of friends in the surrounding um, and neighboring countries. We can go to other websites. We can go to uh, institutions uh, uh, that, uh, that are making whatever we want. And we can ask for, for prices. We have even here um, but y companies. But in the same TIZ is going to raise alarm that the people that have been, the people that who bid it have not been selected and government has found, you know, another... Uh, another supplier to yeah. supply their supply uh, even that has to be actually transparent to so say all you are bidding that a, a motorbike is going to cost um, um 90, 98, 98 um, we, we don't agree with you. We want to ask to, to ask for fresh bids because we have in, here in Zambia companies who are selling motorbikes. And when we go there, they're selling motorbikes with around 30,000 kwacha. Yeah. So let's have that scale. Let's also do our own work. It's not that the things I've received and people are saying these are the lowest bids. But what about value for money? Sometimes people exaggerate things because of maybe they, it's, they know it's government and government has money and government can buy things at any time. So we're saying let's not go beyond beyond the excuse of saying that's the lowest bid. No, is the lowest bid, was it the best bid? Was it there for value for money? No. If things don't go well, cancel them. You say, we are looking for others who can pro procure us um, something much uh, economic, not what we are providing. So the, 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 the excuse of saying um, uh, the bid was um, the, the lowest it's, it doesn't stand because we need to go for value for money. We are a poor country. We can't just be buying things at the level at other countries like in Europe or first world countries are buying it at. So there is another process mm. we can take. Well, yeah. it could be part of the conversation by calling us on the number that is reflecting on your screen or you can give us your messages on our Facebook live stream that is uh, Diamond TV Zambia. We're looking at the fight against corruption and the big question we're trying to find out tonight is are we winning? My guest is Transparency International Zambia Chapter President, Mr. Sampa Kalungu. Now we have seen memoranda of understanding being signed with government institutions over the anti-corruption fight. How do you achieve your mandate in those MOUs? So, um, you understand that the anti-corruption, um, I mean, the Transparency International Zambia is not a government institution which is mandated to fight. We can speak, we can advocate um, uh, about um, um, issues to do with transparency, accountability, good governance, and so on. So um, one way of doing that, what we find quite effective, is by signing a memorandum of understanding, but also by just working closely with some of the institutions within um, government that we, we see they are uh, promoting good governance, they are uh, working against fighting, um, fighting against corruption, they are promoting issues to do transparency, and accountability. Then we go to them to um, agree on how we can work together. For instance, indeed, there have been some memorandum of understanding that we have signed with the Anti-Corruption Commi uh, Commission. Basically, it's um, around the issues of collaborating on case management. Because even as we receive um, um, cases where people come to complain about issues to be cor um, uh, on, uh, around corruption. Mm. Uh, uh, I'll just hold your thought, you know, right there, Mr. Kalungu. We have a caller uh, calling from Kawe Collins. Thank you so much for uh, joining the conversation. Kindly go ahead with your contribution or question. Thank you so much, Mr. Cheswa, and uh, good evening, sir. Um, uh, the one who is on the panel there. Uh, I think uh, I like what uh, that man is saying. Uh, yeah, the New Dawn government, uh, it, uh, they, they are fighting corruption. They are fighting corruption. But uh, uh, if Mr. Cheswa, you were to ask me that uh, we have no professionalism in the way we are fighting corruption, I think this fight of corruption is dividing the nation uh, unlike, you know, uniting the nation. Uh, you must understand that uh, ever since this song of fighting corruption, the so-called fighting corruption, I think the country is more divided. The country is more tense. Uh, I think if you have, uh, you know, been observing what is, uh, you know, uh, obtaining on the ground, you, re you realize, Mr. Cheswa, that uh, we are so divided as a nation. And now I wish the president could realize uh, that let's put some bit of diplomacy in the way we are fighting corruption. Uh, you, 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 look, look, uh, Mr. Cheswa, you gave uh, the, the big man there a very good example where the SEC came on the podium and told the nation that there is this councillor uh, who bought the bank with all its assets. 
And so many issues, you know, they would tell us the, 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 this, this, the previous uh, regime did the BCD and they would dish out a lot of information. And the country would be like, okay, this is what was happening. So what was happening there is that when they dish out those, uh, you know, uh, statements, people were having this hate against the same group. You know what I mean? People were being frustrated against the other group. And they were thinking, okay, these guys, they have so much stolen. So let's see what, what, what the SS has been doing. They have been painting the other group black and not necessarily fighting corruption. And now I wish Zambians could descend and understand what is going on. So you can't be Collins. issuing out statements and you are not ready Kapea, even when you, you so you much told, for okay, coming to let's go now to court and to substantiate contribute. what you are talking about thank you so much mr collins Kapea. calling us from Kabo. you two could be part of the conversation by calling us on the number that is displayed on your screen before you could respond to uh, sentiments that have come through from mr Kapea and uh, how he thinks that the fight against corruption perhaps should be a bit diplomatic and not blunt as it, as it is. You are finishing up on the MOUs and what you, yep. your mandate is, has been on the, the MOUs. Yeah, so we, 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 we signed uh, MOU with the, uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission where we can collaborate on case management. We, were, we received some cases uh, where citizens might feel maybe we are accessible. To then they report cases and we bring those, we take those cases to the Anti-Corruption Commission because they are the ones who can... Um, um, have you, do have you done that yet? We, we do that. We do actually, we have been communicating. But what we, sometimes cases we take there, we would want to, to receive feedback. So we talk around there. But also you may understand that we produce um, the Bright Pairs Index uh, where we try to assess uh, the levels of corruption, the perception of corruption in the nation. And we do it together with the, the Anti-Corruption Commission. So that's one of the things that we do. We have also um, done some memorandum of understanding before with the, the Zambia police where we are dealing with case management but also training some of the police um, officers in the uh, uh, integrity uh, area, um, but also uh, in institution strengthening, but also bringing about whistleblowers' um, uh, policies, just as uh, also we are working closely with the judiciary in terms of working uh, in production of the service charters, how they can work together um, uh, as courts, but also the processes um, so that people are clear about when you want to access the courts, what you can do. We work also with the Zambia Law Development um, Commission uh, around, around issues of uh, law reforms and also to do when we are trying to, um, to advocate for uh, lifestyle audit. Uh, we have also worked, um, we're still working, trying to finalize a, an MOU with the Drug Enforcement um, uh, Commission. Um, we haven't yet signed, but it's almost at the final stages. Uh, Office of the Public uh, Protector, we have also been working with them. Previously, we have worked also with RATSA, also around uh, training their own integrity committees. So it's just where we provide technical support, we provide um, also collaboration, and in some cases when we are doing like um, uh, researches, uh, like Bright Pairs Index, um, 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 we also provide some level of um, uh, uh, finances. So, and these are very, very helpful because uh, you also want this institution to come out to to the public so that they are much more visible and their processes of doing things are so clear. For instance, we worked previously with the Minister of Lands because we realized that people did not understand the processes of getting a land title, for mm. instance. And when you don't know, when you don't have information, people can lie to you. For you to get this, you need to pay so much, even when you don't need to pay anything. We, yeah. we have a caller come calling from Lundazi. I'll give you time and chance to respond to the caller's concerns. Thank you so much uh, for coming through. Can they go ahead with your contribution or question tonight? Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mark. Good evening to you, Mr. Kellins. Thank you. Good evening, the, uh, Mr. The Sampa. Good evening, Mr. Mzomera. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, let me just reduce my, the volume from the TV set here. Okay. In Zakamba Muchinyanja, you know, in uh, topic in Yapuno Maningi, and uh, we should not just leave out our colleagues who are not able to articulate things in English. Uh, in Ghani, he is anti corruption, he, uh, not anti corruption, Maningi is a but he is a team. If you are in Marosiano, because in Zakpasankoni, uh, my examples now, I was late, but uh, I've got some other things which I have to explain to you, to you, to you, my citizens. One, if you want corruption, you want to get a group of people. Because, for example, 
e, kumbuyo ku wa seni likakuo wa honorable seni likakuo was involved in mkaskando kinangu but ni wana even ni other stakeholders i think they have they are just behind like if in, in your case you are also supporting the current situation whereby if something has gone wrong you are voiceless the way i've seen it because you are not looking at as a citizen because imwe ndio mimi kitu kama nyingi zero za tumuli imwe but then it kakuo it died the natural death and that is not even good and it's not healthy to the to the country then in second japa panali ingani ya fertilizer it has just died the natural death are we seeing that uh, your organization is it working effectively or maybe the it, there's a connection with the ruling ruling government uh, the ruling uh, the, the, the the government of uh, to the, 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 the uh, today's government because eh uh, manja hapa kuliwa suvi ya maseo but now eh uh, ngati taona maningi wa kama utaza they are still investigating but other people are being prosecuted minus being investigated are you doing the right thing sir help us as citizens thank you so much all right thank you so much mr kellings muzomela before you can respond to mr collins uh, muzomela our, our earlier question came through um you know from carway um the caller was mr collins from carway he was concerned with how uh not diplomatic the fight against corruption has been we did see one of the commitments that the president um haka indeshlema made to this country when he was being inaugurated is to unite the country mm -hmm. according to collins he says the fight against corruption is just bringing disunity in the country and uh, he his prayer is that the president could could discern that the current fight against corruption is uh not achieving its purpose of uniting the country that, that, that's that's a, an important question that Mr. Kapea has mentioned, and we said at the, at the at the beginning that the way we deal with the issues of corruption and any other governance issues uh, can be very delicate. Perceptions can form opinions, and actions can lead into actions. Um, and indeed, we I, we agree with um, with him that. Uh, if we see that we are dividing the nation in the way we are treating others, they are more, they have more rights than others. Others are more equal than others. People can feel bad about that, and they can start right, uh, acting uh, ho, uh, ho, in the hostile manner towards um, the, the, the government. Let me, as I answer this, also compare with what we, we recently observed in the issue around Kabushi and um, Kwacha, and, and Kwacha, where the role that the, the, the UPND played. It showed that like, they would go also to every extent in order to get their interest uh, pre uh, preserved. But also we saw where people have been saying, the courts also, the way they acted over this issue, there is a possibility of dividing the nation because people from what we saw, the cases that they were, the way they were taken to the con court, the way they were taken to courts of appeal and high court, and the way the courts were failing to be very decisive on these cases, they were, people are feeling that um, they are being influenced. These are perceptions. We are not saying these are the facts. But it's actually because of the way, like Mr. Kapea is saying, the way people are feeling that we are not getting a fair deal in this. this they are dividing us. There is a case we found in, we know, of which also we have interest in, in Kafue to do with land. Are we seeing it with the, maybe the law enforcement agencies taking interest about in, in it? Are we seeing people taking statement, being inv investigating? But are we seeing other people from the previous government being investigated? We are seeing that. We are all Zambians. Anyone who is corrupt is against the Zambian constitution, is against Zambia. Let them be treated uh, fairly. Indeed, the way we treat this, it's something that can be dangerous to, um, uh, to, to, to the nation. But coming to, the, um, to the, also the question of uh, Mr. Mzomera, and I'm happy that he's also making us be accountable for our role as even civil society. He's asking us, are you doing the right job? Because you are supposed to be as an organization to hold these people accountable, sometimes even on behalf of the other people like Mr. Mzomera. Yes, we, to some extent we are doing that, but we can do much more. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is, is that there have been cases indeed that we've been following up and the, the cases that we have been hearing us uh, talk about and we have also been producing uh, statements. But maybe the other thing maybe we don't do is we so much speak of the um, urban areas, we use uh, English. Um, when we produce statements, we use um, uh, um, televisions and radios that are based in, uh, in urban areas. But maybe learning from what you are asking is that 
we need also to be countrywide, even when we are asking government to do certain things about certain um, act, um, uh, acts. Indeed, we would want and would do everything possible in our own power to speak against any evil that we are seeing, especially to do um, again with against the transparency issues. Um, uh, when we see poor governance and mismanagement of resources, um, as well as offices, we speak about that and we are going to do uh, this. We must admit that the first year of the um, the UPND in office, we took a little bit of a backseat just because we were trying to see and to support them because of what they promised to the Zambian people. We wanted to support them, to give them space that let them fulfill with the, uh, what they, they had promised. But of course we have seen there have been some lapses and when we see some lapses without mm. uh, fear or favor, we will speak uh, um, fairly and we will try to represent the Zambian people. Let's speak to Irene Chewe from within Osaka. Thank you so much, Irene, for joining the conversation. Kindly go ahead with your contribution of question tonight. Hello, good evening. Good evening to you, Irene. Uh, yes, I just want to make a contribution uh, concerning the same topic. Uh, Maybe just to comment on the previous caller who said uh, maybe it's one of dividing the nation and everything. Me personally, the way I feel as if it doesn't matter where someone is coming from, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the wealth which someone has, because once you leave that, again, in, in future, you are going to pay for it. Because people start saying, no, some people are not followed just because they have got money. And the same people are saying that they'll be at the forefront again, speaking like that. So for me, I feel as if it doesn't matter where someone is coming from or whatever world which someone has. That is my contribution. I think that's a really be beautiful. Thank, you. Thank you so much, uh, Irene, for coming through. That's a beautiful contribution from Irene. And that's the way it should be. And we have spoken about it, and we have even cited uh, the president of Malawi, who has said, I've appointed you as my ministers. I've not appointed you as uh, people who are corrupt. When you get into something that is beyond your job description, you are on your own. But we have heard also our head of said, state now, use the word that when you go, we do anything uh, to do with corruption, you are on your own. But we would want that to be followed with the action. When he hears something, he tells people, can you help me clear my minister? Can you help me clear? my peers can you help me clear one of these so that when people seeing that action then they will remember what the president is saying and then they match that with the action they will have much more confidence in the system that actually will, the president's political will is not verbally but also it's it's uh, it's something to do with action mm. so in, actually, we've not seen this yet in, in, in the in the new dawn government but we've seen in the previous regime where sitting cabinet ministers who are being investigated exactly. but also persecuted by, 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 you know, by the courts of law. What, 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 what has been the clear position on of tears? Because we also understand the presumption of innocence and, and to prove it otherwise. Yeah. But what, what is the position of TIZ about sitting civil servants that have been uh, investigated yet still holding their offices? The, the way the, the, what do they call, the, the, uh, the situation is if you are being investigated as a civil servant, if you have not been arrested, so if uh, there is a point when you are being investigated, but they are trying to find out whether there is really uh, a case with you as a civil servant. But then there is a point when you have been arrested, when they do like a bond and caution and then they say you have been arrested, that's a point where it stipulates that then you need to stand aside. Actually, there is that provision. You stand aside so that they start investigating you. Um, that's what we should be. That's what we are seeing. But so far, like you are saying, we have not seen, um, indeed, the New Dawn government showing um, willingness for its own people to be investigated. Um, if we can look at the people who have been mentioned in some cases of corruption, we don't have enough evidence that they are being um, um, investigated. Maybe they are being investigated, but that's also the, also the point that we mentioned, that in case they are being investigated, let then the law enforcement agencies also manage their cases as they, as they are managing with the others. Like we mentioned, there is around issues around Kafue land, issues to do with the fertilizers, um, issues to do with the Ministry of um, Health. Uh, remember, uh, the, the, the former PS was fired of 100 million. And people asked questions like, how can one person prepare, uh, approve, 
uh, such a big amount of money without involving others. They definitely it involves others, and you know the system in the government. Others yeah. uh, have considered view that he was used as a sacrificial lamb. People can say what they want because they are not seeing other things that are um, the collaborating with that. Because if you see the, the way the system, the government system, the PS comes to sign at the very end. There should be people from finance who might have brought and pro and and, and uh, brought the, the 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 papers to be signed. For instance, let's simplify this. Um, if you are the PS, you are the CEO of the ministry. You do not do all the paperwork. The last thing you do is to approve that. But also remember, there is a minister of uh, uh, the secretary to the treasury also has a role to play there. The attorney general has to approve that. So all these names are there, but we have not seen any word, any action that has been taken that there have been some investigations. There hasn't been strong voice, been, like yeah. Colin said, there hasn't been strong voice on this issue by TIZ. We, we have actually, we have issued statements around there. We have issued our concern, um, especially when the, the, the PS was fired. We said, we are happy that some investigations was uh, is being done and some people are being fired. Fine. If, yeah. We have Mangala from Dino Saka. Thank you so much for coming through. Uh, can you go ahead with your contribution? Hello. Hello, good evening. Go ahead, Fanwa Mangala. Andrew, good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Great, good evening. <coughs> good evening, sir. Uh, from what you are saying, eh, let me be... I don't know how you you think about what I'm uh, about to say here, but let me say it. Don't you think that uh, your work is being made difficult by the president himself? Because we've seen him making appointments, but we haven't seen him making some reshuffles. Even where people have complained, even where people have suggested to him that this minister is not delivering, he's, he's, calling him. he's afraid of his ministers. Because, you see, these cases that we are talking about, they are very serious cases, and I think they will cost the UPND. By the end of their term, this country will be deeply divided. Number one, look at the concept. It has just become a concept now. Concept of rule of law. What are we seeing there? Corruption issues only affecting those that were in the past government. There are a lot of corruption cases that we are hearing about in the MMD even now. We are hearing about them. But the president is not saying anything about them. He's afraid of his minister that is at the with them. I will render myself unpopular, or some ministers may hate me. Why should we have a president who behaves in that manner? Me, I think it's that man who is making your work difficult there. Otherwise, you mean well yourself. From what you are saying, I really understand you, and I share your feelings. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mwangala, for coming. So what are your thoughts on... Yeah, uh, one thing, of course, uh, issues to do with uh, Mr. Mwangala. Thank you very much for your, for your, for your, uh, for your observation. But um, issues to do with the minister being reshuffled and so on, that is in the president's own uh, hands. Um, but of course, um, Mr. Mwangala, if we have some evidence at the point when we have some evidence that there are certain ministers or certain senior positions uh, being held by people we believe they are corrupt, there we will make noise. There we will speak and even advocate that the president either fires or removes um, those people to other positions. Um, but in terms of generally uh, reshuffling people, that is um, his uh, own um, uh, works. Just as much as we are appealing to the president, for instance, to um, let the positions of like a fine, uh, uh, director general for uh, Financial Intelligence Center to be filled. Um, if we see that any other such strategic position is um, being compromised, we will also appeal to the president that he either removes those or shifts them somewhere. Um, indeed, we want um, um, really um, just to understand very well that the president, the way the president used zero tolerance to corruption, it means even when these little things that seem to be little uh, start emerging, start coming through, they start actually taking away from what the president said. We believed that as the president came in, he was going to provide us, and we still believe that, with a good fight against corruption, which is fair, which is non-discriminatory, not which one, which, which is not others, divisive. Others argue, you know, Mr. Mr. Sampa, but one of the strong 
statement that the president issued in the in the fight against corruption was that he was going to fight future past and current corruption yeah but it seemed the past only ends at patriotic front um, people are not seeing the MMD you know corruption being fought people are not seeing the UNIP corruption being fought what is wrong so those are the kind of also perception that we need to, to do so indeed the president um, needs also to um, um, to, to make sure that what he says is also translated into policy, translated into action by the law enforcement agencies and others. Um, but also in, even institutions that are fighting of, um, uh, corruption, those that are promoting good governance, they need also to work towards what the president is said. Some of the things that the president might not do, because he has said certain things, then the rest of the people, they need to make that actionable. One of the important tools that we, we know we, the, the president can use and other institutions can use is the Auditor General's report, which came out. And the Auditor General clearly indicated, uh, for instance, that in the area of taxation of the mining sector, we have been very weak, we have been very poor, we have been losing money. Um, we have also seen that they have been failure to collect money, but also we have seen that there have been allowances that have been given to the civil servants wrongly, with, to the tune of 32 million kwacha. And this, for instance, if we, the Auditor General comes and says, this is what we have found. And the good thing with the report from the Auditor General's office today is because it's current. The, the report that was presented is the one for 2021. So the most staff, most of the people, the personnel that are being cited are either leaving or even occupying the position they were occupying. Mm -hmm. Therefore, no, we can the, take... The, the, the Dr. General, when he was releasing the report, he was worried uh, of the fact that the, there hasn't been action, you know, uh, from the executive about some of the irregularities that, you know, are highlighted in his report. What do you make of that? That, that's the thing we have seen in the past, and we don't want this uh, new Don government also to inherit the same kind of uh, laxity. Where the, the report comes and it, it alarms the nation about the figures that have been lost, the money that have been lost. Imagine when we are losing 1.5 billion in uncollected tax, uh, we are losing 32 million uh, in unpaid um, uh, in, in allowances that are wrongly um, uh, given. Imagine you give that to Dr. Msokotwani at the Minister of Finance. How many constituencies can he fund in 32 million? There is a lot that he can, he can do with that. Um, so we, we, we don't want the government, the current government, to be treating the Auditor General's report as just a mere um, tool that shows that there was corruption. There are a number of things that they can do. One, we have advocated that maybe let the Auditor General's office be given prosecuting powers so that the cases that they deal with, when they do their own auditing, they find their cases there, they can push them over to the courts of law because they understand them better. Secondly, um, there, is, there can be um, other administrative action that can be done um, where we, we, we need to, if somebody has, was seen to have um, maybe wrongly procured certain things over procured because there are cases we find that for instance um, maybe a hospital is going to cost 49 mi uh, million US dollars mm -hmm. you end up uh, paying for 149 million which is like about 90 million uh, US dollars difference. It's, it's good you're giving those recommendation, yeah. recommendations. Do you think the Public Finance Management Act, you know, on, on utilization of public funds, you know, has been effective? Because it spells out you know, on the process of punishing erring civil servants and many uh, you know, ask why this law has not been effective. Exactly. The tools we have, the laws we have, it's not only the Finance uh, Public Act that talks about that. We have many other uh, acts that can deal with uh, issues that we are seeing from the Auditor General's uh, report. What we are saying, it's the will to act on these issues. When we see people acting, it doesn't only provide a deterrence effect, but also it pre preserves the resources that need to go to the people because a lot of money have, have been lost. Let me also draw you to the report that we, pro we, we issued um, two, two months ago, where civil servants, because Actually, one of the most serious corruption um, that happens is within the civil service, where it's systematic, it's every day, it's every year, a year in, year out, taking out, siphoning money very systematically. Um, where we presented document, where we have evidence, where ministries can pay even a minister, can pay even a PS per month for five years, for six years getting 1.7, not out of their salary because of the money they are accumulating. I'll give you an example. 
for instance, you know ministries get a lot of funding from um, uh, other in institutions, and there are projects that come in the, in the ministry. It could be, a, let's say, let's give an, a, an example of Ministry of Education. Maybe it's a, it's a program that maybe comes from UNICEF on maybe promoting child um, uh, rights, could be something that is promoting uh, early child uh, education and so on. These come well funded. But I'm not saying that's a situation that is happening in the Ministry of Health. I'm just giving uh, education. I'm just giving an example. And when they come, most of these, they come with established kind of secretariat. But instead of employing a secretariat, establishing a secretariat, you find the money that was supposed to, 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 uh, to be given to the one to head the secretariat is, for instance, given to the minister. And then the money was given to, to the deputy uh, coordinator is given to the PS. And then the other monies are shared directors and so on. This is happening and it can be demonstrated. So that if, let's say in one ministry, there are such projects like about five projects that are coming well funded, you find that a particular minister can go home because he or she is receiving from that project about 150000 per month. But if, let's say, there are five for argument's sake, it means then the, the minister is going back home with about 750000 per month. And if the project is taking five years, it means the minister is going to be getting that. The PS is going to get similar money. The, yeah. And this, for us, that is the corruption also which is not being fought vigorously. Because people taking money every day. It's even much more vicious than maybe one scandal which takes away $32 million. But this is systematic every year, and there are many ministries, there are many directors who are getting involved in that. On top of that, we have mentioned already that the ministries actually, the kind of corruption that is there, they share monies in terms of allowances, even those that don't go for. So there, there is a big gap that we need to look at. Mm. And if we were to control that, we would save but a lot my, of resources. My director tells me about to close, and we we'll close now. But do you think we are winning this fight against corruption? We really are quite far away from winning this fight. And the reason why we are saying this, first of all, we need to see a different uh, mindset uh, and a shift and different political will, which gives um, the law enforcement agencies like resources, like I mentioned, resources, fi financial material, personnel. Um, we need also to see them given political will and space to operate where there is no one who is being sacrificed, no one who is being uh, preserved, no one who is being protected, but where they just uh, go flat out. Everyone is a citizen. And like uh, Madam Chewe said, if a thief is a thief, it doesn't matter whichever color he's wearing. Let the law enforcement be Transparency report, International sir. Zambia, CHAP President Sam Pakalungu, thank you so much for having me time to speak with us on Costa tonight. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. We've been looking at the fight against corruption, and the question we've been trying to interrogate tonight is, are we winning? My guest has been Sam Pakalungu, Transparency International Zambia Chapter President. My name is Andrew Mwansa. See you next week on Costa. Costa was brought to you by FQM Trident Limited, a subsidiary of First Quantum Minerals Limited.